guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brienne and today I will be taking you guys along with me through a reading vlog of A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Calvero. Alright guys, so I did start A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Calvero. Correct me if I'm saying that wrong, please. Um, I started this yesterday and I'm about 60 pages in and I'm absolutely in love with it. I didn't think I would be because mysteries aren't really my thing, but this one, I don't know what it is about it, but it has excellent writing. I love the character development of Charlotte and Jamie and um, I can see the representation sneaking through because the author hasn't made it very obvious yet but charlotte comes off as very autistic with her set schedule and everything that she has to do or else and how she um doesn't do physical contact very much it's very obvious but it hasn't come out directly that she is and i think i've heard some people in different reviews or talking about it say that she is autistic so i can see that coming through even if she's not is a good representation of people who have set schedules and i really like the mystery so far i like how the person who did commit it how they're framing them but not just because they're framing them like i know they're innocent but the person framing them is kind of being like an asshat about it because they're bringing in elements from their great 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 grandfather well Jamie's great 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 grandfather's books about Sherlock Holmes and it's bringing in stuff from the most outrageous book and so I really like that I like how it's just like the small details like the glass of milk and the snake skin and how the guy was actually killed by being poisoned by arsenic which is a good way to frame Charlotte because she does have the keys to the science building but I'm excited to see who actually killed him because yes Dobson was a total dweeb and should not have been as mean as he was but he still did not deserve to slowly die of arsenic but um i have one small theory of who it could be but i don't think it's right i think it could be tom um jamie's roommate but i don't know that's just a feeling i have there's nothing really legitimate to base it off of but that's what i think so far Alrighty guys, so last night after finishing my amazing bookcase, took me three hours by the way, um, I ended up reading about only 20 pages out of a study in Charlotte and I wanted to continue reading but I knew I had an early class today so I was not able to but I have read about 50 pages today and it's really good so far not quite sure on my exact feelings towards everything that's going on in the book but i really do ship jamie and charlotte but they're both being stubborn and won't get together i really like it so far i don't have much else to say about it um there's just a lot of topics that i'm not quite sure really fit and stuff that the author brought in from the original um, Sherlock Holmes series that I didn't like and was the reason why I couldn't get into the books um, and I'm scared that that's going to be the same case here for A Study in Charlotte because I want to like it so badly but I have a feeling that's also gonna come back and be one of the reasons why I don't like it. So I will update you guys here in a bit, um, that was all I was able to do yesterday and since it is only 
one in the afternoon. I have plenty of time to read a whole bunch more. I plan to get a good chunk of this book read today so that I can finish it up maybe tomorrow at the earliest. Alrighty guys, so it's a little later. It is currently six o'clock in the afternoon and I have taken a few breaks here and there from reading to eat, to have a call with my girlfriend, stuff like that. And I am currently now on page 205 of A Study in Charlotte. And I think I like this one. Not like love it, but I like it. But I couldn't really get into it until after they were cleared of being suspects. Like I did not like that aspect of it. I didn't like how they were suspects, but I like the idea of them going further in and trying to solve it themselves but not to clear their name. I like how humble it makes them to be solving it just to solve it, not because they're suspects and they need to clear their name. I think that's a really good aspect to have in a lot of stories that wasn't really brought up in a lot of the other mystery murders that I've read where they were trying to solve it because they were suspects and that's the only reason. But I like how they were suspects, but then they were cleared and they still continued to solve it. Like that's something you don't see much. And I guess I like how Charlotte is bringing out a better side of um, Jamie because he didn't realize the skills that he had, the deduction skills, and he knew he was smart, but Charlotte herself is a different kind of smart and she does it all on her own. And I absolutely love that about her. I just don't like how far away from emotions she is. And even when she's not, she doesn't show it. But I think I'll enjoy this one. Not absolutely love, but I think it'll be a good read by the time I'm finished with it. So I'm just gonna go read a little more and see how far I can get into it before bed. Alrighty guys, good morning. It is earlier in the day than usual because last night I finished a study in Charlotte and I decided that I was going to wait to update you guys on my final thoughts till this morning. And there's a few things I would like to go over First off, it took me almost 200 pages to actually get into the book. And I personally think it was just because I don't like when the tension for the characters is based off of just their own well-being. I like when the tension of the story is broadened and there's a lot more at stake than just, oh, we might go to jail. So that was what the first half of it was. They were so worried about going to jail. But the towards the end, it started to broaden and they were solving it for themselves. And it wasn't, they were just suspects. There was so much more to the story at that point. And their relationship, Charlotte and um, James, is just expanded and got better. And they built off of each other. And, um, in the start of the book, all we know is that Charlotte has used before. We don't know in what context, and we haven't seen her use, but towards the end we see her really high on Oxy, and James finds her, and I think that is a crucial part in the story that just brought them closer together because James saw her at one of her lowest points and was still there for her and she didn't think that he would be because not a lot of people would stay when you're at your lowest but it was a refreshing thought to her that someone would be there for her at her lowest especially when she considered him her best friend and I really like that 
and it's a subtle like nod back towards the original Sherlock and Watson that the story is based off of and in the beginning I did not um actually have any idea who the murderer could be and I was like no it's not Charlotte it's not James that's all I knew as I read I became more suspicious of James's roommate Tom because he just he was there was something off about him and I was right he wasn't the murderer but he was working with the creative writing teacher to spy on James to get information about James and Charlotte for a novel he was trying to write. And by doing that, um, Tom ended up putting a camera and audio in their room to spy on James. And he, it was not... That's not okay. And you don't find that out until about the last 58 pages, I think. Right before he's infected with this deadly disease. And they know the nurse did it. Because the school nurse is the one who did it. Because school nurse was Moriarty's ex-fiance. Because after Charlotte ruined Augustus Moriarty's life um his parents helped him fake his death and so that left his ex his fiance on her own thinking he was dead and her wanting revenge on charlotte because she thinks that charlotte is the reason he killed himself but he didn't do that he ended up going and living far away from his family and working for Charlotte's brother, Milo. And so we get to see Milo at the end of the book. And I don't necessarily like him, but I don't not like him. Like I like him, but his character is just very stiff and all put together, he does not show any emotion, which I think is very true to the Sherlock Holmes family. But it would have been nice to see some more emotion than he did show because the slightest emotion that he showed was after um, he finds out that Charlotte kissed Watson. And I'm like, that that's the only emotion we're going to see from him this entire time. And it's not bad, but I, w I wish I could have seen more of it. I did do a lot of laughing in the second half, like in the end, because she, the author, does such a good job of incorporating humor into such a serious plot line at the same time as keeping it serious and keeping everything focused. I think the humor really helped and it kept the end of the book more fast paced, but it didn't rush anything and it kept everything on track. And I like how we get to meet James's stepmom. Her first words to him, his stepmom's first words to him are, are you two having sex? Because she does not want to put James in the same room as Charlotte to sleep if they are, because they're teenagers, which I understand. But it's, that was one of my favorite lines throughout the entire book. It was just, those were her first words to her stepson that she had never met before. And I really liked the incorporation of James's half-siblings that he had never met before either. It brings out a softer side of him. You'd think it might bring out a softer side in Charlotte, but you just see how her personality is more solidified to who she is is and it's not that she's not caring towards his half siblings but she is more herself so she isn't like oh i don't care she's i'm gonna teach you what i know even though kids don't necessarily need to know how to build the stuff she knows how to build 
but I really liked the idea of that and it's sweet that she gets to know his family and I like how she's trying for James like she's actually trying for a sense of normalcy with him even though that's really hard for her and I like how James does not push her in any way and he's completely there for her no judgment at all it's just one of those things where you don't expect them to work out in the beginning but by the end you're rooting for them like crazy and I don't know how soon I'm gonna pick up the second book but I cannot wait because I feel think it'll be an even better build on this world and their lives. And so I ended up rating A Study in Charlotte 3 out of 5 stars. No, it was not my absolute favorite, but it was a solid book with solid characters and a very, very interesting plot that keeps you hooked the entire time even if it does take you a while to get into. I do think there could have been a little more character development on James's mother, but again, she was not a very big aspect of this book, and since there are more books in this series, we have more of a chance of seeing that development in the following books. Alrighty guys, that was it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you guys decide to pick up Study in Charlotte. I would like to know in the comment section down below any mystery books that you've enjoyed or books that took you a while to get into but ended up being really solid books that you would recommend to people. And don't forget to like and subscribe.